Hello virtual educators and welcome back. It's Kelly Austin and I am so excited about this video because I'm going to share with you my baby and that is the LTVD study template. This template is going to transform your students. They are going to become learning commanders just because you require them to complete this template before they meet in the virtual classroom. So a little heads up, my students, say for example, have class on Wednesday night. Well, then this, this template is due the Saturday prior to when they have class. Why is that? Because it allows me to make sure that they even read the right content, that they read the right chapter or the right article. It allows me to customize their instruction because I go through, they get a grade, they get 10 points um, per week on this document. And so I create a place on my course site, which is called the LTVD journal and so every week they earn 10 points towards 100 points um, of in the journal from submitting this template. I'm able to then see uh, what areas they may be struggling with or not fulfilling to capacity, um, if they're not being detailed enough, and I can send them an email, I can put the comments in the journal, um, you know, where I put the journal entry and the feedback for the student on Blackboard, there's so many places that I can give them this information. And this not only helps them personally, but it also helps the group, because the more prepared, the more detailed, the more thorough students are individually, it makes the group time even much better. So let's get into this video. And on another video, I'm going to share with you their pacing guide. All right, so here you see they are going to include the date. Um, here you're going to see they're going to include their name, the unit. I mentioned in a previous video that my um, learning through the through virtual discussion process is done in what you could call a thematic unit type of thing where um, all of the articles, all of the material, all of the um, chapters they read are associated with specific student learning outcomes. Okay, so in the course of a semester, a 16 week semester, the students would go through three units. I used to do four, um, but I reduced it to three. All right, so and in which in each unit they have a session so they would put you know this is unit one session number three or session number two or session number one and this information is included on their syllabus they're going to put the title of the article or chapter here they're going to put the authors here I had them to put the day that they started on this template and the time, the day that they ended, because I just want to see how much time they actually spent. Now, hopefully they're being honest <laughs> and, um, you know, and I can tell, I'm telling you, some of them, they'll put, you know, if these two days are the same, that typically shows me, I can see the results of that here, because this template should not be done in one sitting. Okay, and I, I give them that information that's explained in, the, in their pacing guide and also in the instructional video that they get to watch where I go through another student's a sample of the template and I explain to them, you know, that this is not something that you do. You sit down one day and you go to the library, or you sit down in your living room or sit down in your dorm and just do all of this in one sitting. Um, you will not get good results and you will be overwhelmed if you do that. And that's what I share with them. So this start and end time just kind of gives me some a, a little data to gauge how long it may have taken them to complete this document. All right, so here it says step two because step one, as you know, is logging in. So in step two, they're going to talk about their vocabulary. They're going to list and define all of the key terms that stood out to you in this chapter or article. Okay, so the, the terms that stood out to them is what they're going to share here. And as we talked about in a previous video, there is no set number. They can add to the to this uh, section if they want 10, 10 terms. Uh, they can, um, you know, not fill in every single uh, cell here. What they're going to do is look for those terms that the author emphasized as well as those terms that were very unfamiliar to them. 
okay? There's no certain amount of terms that should be selected. It is completely based on your own judgment. Give a real life example of the term to clarify the meaning. So in another video, I'm going to show you a student sample so that you can see how this is done. But in this one, I'm just going to go through the steps. So here they're going to put the term and then they're going to put a definition and they're going to give a real life example. OK, all right. Step number three. Statement of the author's main message. They're going to enter the message, the main message what the author wanted the readers to know as a result of being exposed to this information. Do not begin the main message with phrases like to inform, to explain, to demonstrate, as these phrases indicate the author's purpose rather than the main message. So oftentimes students might say um, the author's main message is that uh, is that they want to inform, I'm trying to think of a good example, they want to inform teachers of uh, better ways to teach writing, okay? <laughs> Sorry for that little pause, but this is a real live, this is the real me, I want you to hear me think it out loud. So they're pretty much telling me the the purpose, like when the author sat down and said, okay, I think I'll write a, a, a um an article about such this and so, okay? More of kind of like their topic as opposed to what the message was, what the author was trying to convey to the reader as a result of writing this article about the writer's workshop. What was the main idea of this article, okay? So I want them to differentiate between when an author has a purpose and when an author has a main message. Even though the message is intertwined into the reason why they wrote the article, it's a little bit different, okay? And so we talk about that, um, and I shared that with you on the um, previous videos. So this section is about for them to and I highlighted the word that so they won't say is to explain the author's main message is to explain because a message isn't to explain tell me what the message was exactly okay all right now here in step four they're going to go through major themes subtopics and uh, topics and subtopics so I'm going to read these uh, instructions to you Include the final full sentence outline for the article or chapter here. The headings and subheadings should appear in the same order that they appeared in the article or chapter. Provide the key points from each section in complete sentences. Finally, create two or three analytical questions based upon this content. Your questions should require your group members to use their higher order thinking skills, such as application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation, etc. See Bloom's taxonomy for more information about higher order thinking skills. You may also find support in the analytical thinking folder on our course shell. So I have a folder that is devoted to helping them think analytically and has um, documents such as Bloom's Taxonomy, uh, Verbs, Revised, um, just lots of resources for them in a folder. So here is where they're going to include their um, outline. We come here, there are analytical questions. You will only pose one question, that means during the session, but it's good to have more than one just in case someone in the group asks a similar question. So I require them to have two and the third question is optional. All right, relevancy to other concepts, okay? Step five, integration application of material to other works. So first they're gonna talk about here, relevancy to other concepts. Um, how does the information help you understand other concepts? Does it confirm something that you already knew? Does it contradict any ideas or beliefs that you already had? For this section, if a group member does not have a response, write his or her name and indicate no response. Now that right there is, is um, just a message for them that's also on the editor's template which is the template that they actually have pulled up on the screen when they meet as a group, 
okay so when students meet as a group there's something called the editors template that is up on the screen that looks very much like this and it's just letting uh, them know that you know everybody may not have a comment about this part and that's okay on that template they can just say you know Kelly didn't have a response to that and that's perfectly fine all right here relevancy to other courses or textbooks there's no set number to share here just make sure that you share at least one course or textbook with the group be specific about how the course or textbook relates to the material in the article or chapter that is the focus of this discussion. So here I have them think about the name of the course that they took, the school where they took the course, and how it applies. Now you might say, wow, you expect them to do that? I'm telling you they can do it. And I tell them, you know, get out your transcript. You know, just sit back and think about, because oftentimes um, in, 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 in various research articles that I've read, it talks about how students have a difficult time making a connection between what they've already learned and what they're learning now. They don't see how they relate or how they make any sense. And so through this process every week, they begin to see, oh, that class I took in high school relates to this, or at the community college, or that I took last semester, or a class that I'm taking right now. Um, you know, a speech class could apply to this article, a Spanish course that I took, um, you know, a writing course that I took, and they begin to think about that. And, and, they, um, and it's a beautiful thing to see them as they go through the semester retrieve prior knowledge and make it and see how it relates to what they're studying now. And so here they explain how it relates. They, what I tell them, they build a bridge between that concept and a concept from that course or something they learned in that course to what they're studying and reading and what they're discussing right in that moment. Okay, so they can do, they don't have to do, I have all these, one, two, three, four. Of course, they don't have to do four. They can just do one. Uh, as long as they have one there, they're good. All right, relevancy to this course. And let me say, I can hear somebody saying, what if they can't think of anything? It's all about your expectation and your standards. If you tell them they don't have to do it or it's okay if they can't think, they won't. If you make it a requirement and this is a part of their grade, they'll they'll sit and they'll think of something, trust me, and they always do. I've been doing this for for about 14 years now at the at the time of this recording. So they always do. They always come up with this. And this template I have revised over the years. As you can the last revision was in 2015, as you can see down here. So um, you know, I know that this, I'm telling you, listen to me, be coachable, because I promise you they will retrieve that information. All right, relevancy to this course. I really like this part because it helps them to see that I have a little bit of sense. I have a little bit of sense <laughs> and that what I'm having you to read, uh, you know, correlates to something else that you're reading. What I'm having you to, um, what's in your textbook this textbook is really you know valuable that this information actually relates to this article that you're reading okay so in this particular section it says that they include anything that they've been exposed to while taking this course that relates to the article or chapter that they just read for this section you will need to include as many connections as possible you will need to think about your independent assignments articles read for the LTVD, discussion board activities, etc. As you progress through the semester, this list should get longer and longer, okay? All right, now, when you list an article, video, webinar, etc., the title must be included. The relevancy should be explained thoroughly. So here in the connection, they have to list the title of the article, or the video or the webinar. This is because in my in my courses they watch videos, especially um, in the course where I do the LTVD, they actually do something called a video analysis, where they kind of go through these set, same steps, very similar, um, um, 
as they watch a video on, you know, as an assign, an independent assignment. So a video that I may have had them watch on the writer's workshop may relate to this article that they're going to be discussing when they come together as a group. So here they're going to share any content that they have been exposed to while in your class. Of course, the first week that they do this, there may only be the textbook chapter that they're going to be able to relate. There may be only one source, but as the course evolves and progresses, they will have more references, more resources to put here as they read more chapters, more articles, and exposed to videos and whatever other content that you have in your course. All right, here for step six, application of material to self. How does this material apply to your life and or how does it impact you personally and or professionally? What are some examples of how you might apply it? So they're going to come up with a personal connection or a professional connection and then share examples of how they can apply this content to themselves now. All right, and step number seven, evaluation of the author's presentation. All right, here, based upon the title or stated purpose of the article or chapter, did the author deliver? Was the content covered comprehensively or partially? Examine the depth and quality of the content. And then they share their thoughts here. Audience appeal. Who was the intended audience? Does the author's writing style suit the audience? Examine the author's language, terminology, sentence structure, and voice. Okay, organization and illustrations. Examine the format, headings, subheadings, tables, charts, maps, photographs, etc. Were the concepts illustrated? If not, would that have made the article or chapter more understandable or relatable? Credibility and authority. Is the author qualified to write this article? What is his or her expertise or background? Lastly, usefulness. Is the article relevant to the student learning outcome for which this unit is focused? If so, how did it help bring it to light? So there you have the study template. This is just a blank page if they wanted to write notes or anything. Um, but this is the study template. And I had shown you pieces of it in the other videos. But I wanted you to see the whole thing. And I wanted to give it to you in this module here. So uh, feel free to share any concerns or any comments, any questions that you have about the study template. This study template is what guides your students to effectively effective study habits so that they are successful in the learning through virtual discussion classroom. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.